we have quite a topsy-turvy world at the moment. So if you are lost, confused or disillusioned, or you feel there is something calling you to do something bigger in the world, this video is for you. It's a private webinar I gave. I know that you're in the right place because you're here watching it now. Enjoy. So welcome to this uh, special webinar, which is called Making Sense of the Muddle and the Struggle. And we're going to be looking at the energy waves, what's going on at the moment, some of the bigger pictures, some of the smaller pictures, and your interaction with it. So this presentation is kind of broken down into four areas. First of all, we're going to kind of set the scene and look at this idea of cycles of time. And then we're going to look at the energy of the time that we're currently in. Then we're going to look at the overview of the choices you're being asked to make. And finally, a glimpse into your power and your role at this time. I believe that you've been born at this time because you have a role to play in the future of humanity. And it all starts with you having a deeper understanding of who you are and the reality of what's actually going on at the moment. So I'm going to be helping you understand what's going on at the moment and a little bit of a glimpse uh, as, to, uh, as to who you are. So let's start out by this first section, which is looking at setting the scene, giving you an idea of uh, cycles of time. Now, we're fundamentally, we are surrounded by cycles of time. You have something as simple as night going into day and back into night. It circulates around. Then you have the, the lunar cycle. Then we've got the seasons, which operate within cycles. And then we've got other cycles that are constantly going on. We've got with Earth circulating around the sun in, um, in, the, in the 365 days circling around another planet circling around them. And then we've got massive, slow, incredibly long cycles of time. And many, many civilizations have explored this circular nature of time, the study of seasons in agriculture. And one were the ancient Chinese. And they came up with a very in-depth understanding about how the world worked with these cycles of time they had the kind of five elements the five energies yin and yang and they used them to understand how we change and how we develop what's our personal development how everything changes and it flows they're looking at the cycles and the flow within politics they looked at the associations within education within business within health within prediction and placement they looked at patterns and cycles that were associated with peace and war and economics and relationships and they were looking at how you would have cycles operating for example in geopolitics consumerism spirituality and they recorded this for thousands and thousands of years. And then something happened in the Qin dynasty, which was a 15-year dynasty. Most of the other dynasties lasted 800,000 years. This lasted 15 years, and it was known as the Great Fires of Qin, because basically what they did were in the Qin period is they ordered the burning of the, all the books except a few, and they also buried the philosophers alive that were talking about them. So by the end of this 15-year period, there was very little left of this wisdom. And we know it exists because we have the library records, but all that was left was a few scraps, some stuff around health, some stuff around prediction, the I Ching, placement, Feng Shui, and, and books like The Art of War. But the rest of it was gone. I have spent my life looking at how can we reclaim this wisdom? How can we understand it again? How can we see patterns? This is a picture of me in 1980. 1980 in Los Angeles, learning acupuncture, when I understood the five elements, the five energies, it was like I had a, a matrix experience. I suddenly saw patterns and shapes in politics and in consumerism and, and economics. Now, each of these is associated with one of the five energies, and geopolitics is existing within a fire energy structure. It gives it certain qualities, certain characteristics. Consumerism existing within an earth energy has characteristics, and the same with spirituality. Now, the phases that we're looking, just a bit of a caveat here, the phases that we're looking in these, none of these phases are, are pure and absolute. They're patterns. It's just like saying this summer isn't very hot. Well, it might not be a hot summer, but it's still a summer. And you will find exceptions and variations to what I'm saying, because we're looking at large generalized pictures and structures. And also each energy that we're having has a different relationship with time. But let's just go back to look at these um, three areas and help you understand what's going on. So if we just look at geopolitics at the moment, they're sitting in this fire energy phase. Now, what is fire energy geopolitics? Well, it's basically democracy. And we have seen a steady rise in democracies. And it is the, the dominant form of our geopolitics are, are around the world. And fire energy geopolitics democracies is based around us voting for a promise and whether or not we love the person. It's also we're voting for them based on their ability to communicate with us and tell us what's going on. 
Now, the ancient Greeks, when they looked at democracies, one of the things they had as a concern about democracies is they said that a democracy will be able to exist if we have equality within the society, and democracy will be able to exist if we have an accepted truth. So currently, we don't have equality within society. We've probably seen the largest divisions across the world in terms of who has and who has not. Who has not. Being very clear, there is no shortage of money in the world. There is just a massive distribution problem. And the ancient Greeks were very clear that democracies would really struggle with that. They would also struggle if we don't have an understanding of what is true and what is not true, because anyone can then say anything and be voted in, and it, the, the system collapses. So within our geopolitics system at the moment, we currently are in a fire energy situation, but it is moving into a different phase. It's moving into an earth energy phase. There's a, a fundamental shift. Now, this shift in geopolitics, this doesn't happen very often. It's very slow, long moving cycles, but we're seeing a shift from fire energy into earth energy. And earth energy is about our ability to understand each other, our ability to support each other, to have a diversity, to get along, to have communications. Earth energy is related to late summer. And think about those lazy, hazy days where we all sit around the table, we break bread, we discuss, we talk about things. And there is time to have discussions, to look at the depth of what's going on. So we're moving into a geopolitics around communities, societies, and an understanding of supporting and looking after each other. Our consumerism, however, is doing something different. It's currently in an earth energy phase. And like I said, earth energy is related to late summer. And that's about an abundant time of all the foods and all the fruits and all these things you could possibly have. There's just so much of it. It's a time in late summer where the animals gorge themselves. And we see that within our consumerism, the earth energy phase of us gorging and binging and filling ourselves up with as much as we possibly can have to the extent that it overflows onto the streets. Normally, the earth energy consumption would be controlled by our ability to produce mm -hmm. But there is no limit to our ability to produce because we can mechanize things, we can industrialize things. So we have produced a situation where we can just have everything we want whenever we want. But the issue is that it has a cost to our planet. So we are currently in an earth energy consumerism phase. And this earth energy consumerism phase is trying to move into a different energy. It's trying to move into metal energy. Metal energy is associated with autumn, with fall, and less is more. It's about minimalism. It's about simplicity. Metal energy is about digitalization. It's also about having things that are of high quality, that last, that are of value. So instead of having 100 T-shirts that you wear once, you have one or two that you last and are made of good quality. And that's how consumerism used to be. Things were passed down through generations. So we're shifting into less is more, but more elegant, more beautiful, but just not tons of things. And that shift is going to be better for the planet now spirituality is again it's moving it's currently in a metal energy phase metal energy is associated with fall autumn as i said and that's about things being disconnected it's about things being missing looking for what's hidden so our spirituality for the last few hundred years and and, and beyond that has been exploring say for example with freud what's going on within our unconscious what's hidden from us looking for what's missing looking for this hidden part looking to understand the unconscious, the patterns we can't see. And the personal development into is played into this, that you're, there's something wrong with you that needs to be fixed. You need to be complete. You need to be whole. You need to deal with your unconscious beliefs and your stuff. However, that mental energy spirituality is doing a massive shift. And we're moving from the unconscious mind into a connection between the heart and the mind. We're tapping into the ability for us to manifest, to create, of our mind's ability to transmit. Uh, water energy is also associated with the past. Uh, so there is a bringing in of ancient wisdom. And all the neuroscience and all the discoveries are that the ancients knew something that we didn't. We're tapping into indigenous wisdom of people to do with our connection with the planet, with each other. So it is a rising up into... A, a completely different way of operating. We're trying to change our geopolitics and we're battling around that. We're trying to change our consumerism, deciding about that, our spirituality evolving around that. And that is some of the muddle and the struggle because we're going from one place to another. And as human beings, we can struggle with change. Uh, we can get frightened, we can get defensive, we can get angry, we can try and hold on to things. 
because certain people will lose their power and they lose their influence. We're also within a 12-year block of time that's dominated by metal energy. It starts with two metal energy years, it ends with two metal energy years. So out of the 12 years, four of them are metal energy, and that sets the scene for this block of time. And what metal energy loves is things to be really simple. So we're having a time of phenomenal change in a block of time where we want things simple. So we've seen an explosion in very black and white thinking. We're also in a phase of time where we have social media or forms of media that allow black and white thinking to exist. X, formerly known as Twitter, all you can be is black and white. There are not long conversations. There is a proliferation of our ability to be black and white. Okay, so if you are struggling with the cruelty of people's voices and what they're saying and how we're treating each other, and it seems it is the change that is going on from one system to another within the structure of this metal energy phase. Okay, let's dig into this a little bit more. Let's look at another phase that we're in. And this is a 60 year cycle. So to understand this, you need to understand the Chinese zodiac. Now, the Chinese zodiac operates within each year is associated with one of 12 animals. And that gives the year a certain set of characteristics, a certain set of qualities. Each year is also associated with one of the five elements, one of the five energies. So basically, each one of these years occurs once every 60 years. So currently we are in a water rabbit year. And the last time that happened was in 1963. Now, each of these years uh, has a, a theme to it, a flow, an undercurrent, a kind of a, a, a vibration. It has a set of qualities. And each of these 12 blocks of time has a theme, a flow, an undercurrent, a vibration. And that might then be confusing. How on earth does this interact with me? And how do I make sense of it for me as an individual? Well, I think the easiest way to do that is via your vitality test profile. And if you've not taken the vitality test, you just go to fiveinstitute.com and it is completely free. And what your vitality test profile is, it contains an amalgam, an accumulation of all the things you are, your East, your West star, your numerology, the essence of who you are, your parental influence. And it also contains a set of energies that have a certain set of qualities. The ancient Chinese believe that when we came to Earth, we made a promise to do something or be something, to explore something, to be involved with something. And within your vitality test is everything you need to fulfill that promise. Um, and we'll come to that later, but it's got everything you need. So we're currently in this block of time, equivalent to the 1960s. They were deciding, did they want peace or did they want war? They were looking at how we, they wanted to live. They were looking at the climate. They were looking at sustainability. They were looking at individualism. They were looking at complexity of thought. And they, they moved in the 1960s from the trauma of these two world wars into a modernity into a new way of thinking they were talking about space exploration and they sent a man to the moon and there are similarities with what we're doing here we're seeing is there something beyond our existence can we let go of old systems and old ways of being and it was saying how do we want the world to be and there were fundamental shifts and there were world leaders that were saying that they had a dream they had a dream about how they wanted the world to be and as I'm recording this, we've had the 60 year anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King having his I Have a Dream speech. So you as an individual in this moment in time will be having something going on about how you want the world to be. There will be something going on for you looking at your dreams. And it may be for you that your dreams have been broken or they have been changed or you're struggling to see them or the experiences you had during that 2020, 2021 made you rethink everything you've got. Because what they didn't have in the 1960s was they didn't have geopolitics, consumerism and spirituality trying to shift energies at the same time. They were just looking at how they wanted the world to be. They were making big decisions that have consequences, but it was there weren't these other patterns on top of it. So if you are someone that has lost your dream, that is not uncommon. But you could also be someone that who's has a dream that is constantly nudging you and pushing you. It's like, oh, I've got this dream. I have, I've had this dream for ages. And this is how I want the world to be. Or you've looked at the world and you've seen the contrast and you thought, thought to yourself, I really don't want the world to be like this. What I dream of is the world when we actually get on together. So this whole scenario is getting us to decide how we want the world to be and around our dreams and our wishes. Now, we also had in the 1960s, we had, okay, was president. And he had a particular dream and an idea to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely. 
but also about whether or not we needed to look at disarmament or whether or not we need to look at, at weapons, changing the way, the structure, the way we were, bringing in modernity. Now, what we are in is, like I say, a water rabbit year, and just like they were in 1963. And as I talked about at the beginning of this year, what we get in rabbit years is we get what I call I call plot twists. Rabbits change direction very quickly, and we will get plot twists. And in 1963, the end of the water rabbit year, they had a plot twist, and JFK was assassinated. Now, we have had constant plot twists this year. And in your life, you will have had plot twists when you think something's going on a certain way and suddenly it changes direction. Now, those plot twists are sometimes very difficult to deal with. However, a plot twist in a film or a book, they're there to wake you up. They're there to make you see something differently. They're there to change your thinking. They're there to create a, a change in your state. That's why we have plot twists in movies and films to wake you up. So there are constant plot twists at the moment. And again, that's part of the muddle and the struggle, because just when you think you found some stability, there is a plot twist, as, as they had in 1963. So if we look at what they were also doing in 1963, like I say, this, this period of time we're in is deciding how we want the world to be. So in the 60s, they decided how they wanted the world to be was that we would be consumers. Um, and if you look at the kind of economic policies put out in 1962, the idea was that if we keep growing in the economy, everything will be fine and everyone will be able to have everything. And that was what they decided at the beginning of the 60s to consume and grow and expand. And like I said, everything has consequences. And that's what we're fundamentally looking at now. Some decisions that they made have had the consequences we've had. We've got the division and they made choices around whether or not they would keep or stop nuclear weapons. So we are currently in the same make your mind up time. We're being asked to make our mind up as to how we want the world to be. Do we want to continue to have division? Do we want to have uh, a distribution? Are we wanting to have something? And at the same time as that 1960s big decision about how we want the world to be, do we want peace? Do we want love? Do we want this? Do we want that? We're having this flip and this change around in these three big areas and that creates a muddle and a struggle. But it also creates an absolutely glorious time where we get as individuals to help decide how we want the world to be if we can just deal with the muddle and the struggle. And there are many people, it's not just me helping people deal with this, but this is a time where it is a glorious time, but we need to find ways to get through it. So let's just look at the overview of the choices we're being asked to make. And this, make, and this is very, very quick. This is just saying, do we want war or do we want love? Do we want to have division where some people have or don't have? Remember, there's a change in geopolitics where we are going to be looking at better distribution, etc. Are we going to look at a situation with this level of division or are we going to support each other and give you a hand up? Are we going to have a black and white thinking or are we going to have a recognition that we are better than this and we are better together? And we can have dialogue and conversation, not shouting and fighting where we just have a single view. Are we going to let this planet die or are we going to do something about it? It is massive choices we are being asked to make within the situation where we have a muddle and a struggle. So let's just do a quick glimpse into your power and your role at this time. So as I said, when you come to Earth, you make a promise to do something, to be something. It, it's reflected in your vitality profile, the energies that you have within you. And if you look at the Chinese character for purpose, this is the Chinese character for purpose. The Chinese characters have hidden messages within them. And if you look at this one, on this left-hand side, this up-down, that means from heaven to earth, the strike is means to voice something. This here, this box is like an official stamp, and this is a banner. And these are two sets of doors. So what that means is when you came from heaven to earth, you said you would do something. You made a promise. It was given an official stamp, and you were given a banner to follow, and then you walked through those doors. So there is something around a promise we have made. Now, the promise that you made that you came to explore could be something like learning to love yourself. It could be the difference between giving and sacrifice. So the promise you make does not have to be the Martin Luther King, I have a dream and I'll change the world. It could just be that you will be a shining example of someone who has, is able to love themselves. And is that a precious thing? My God, it is. The Chinese character for willpower, the top part is a, a blade of grass being pushed through the ground. So it's something being pushed out into the world. And the bottom symbol is a character for your heart. So the purpose is a promise you made when you came to earth, but your willpower is what is in your heart. 
that you would like to push out into the world. It's not about grunt. It's not about grind. It's not about pushing and willpower and determination. It's just saying what is in your heart that you want to push into the ground. And that is what your the willpower is really about. And remember, we're having this shift in spirituality when we are moving from the mind to the heart to the interconnection between the heart and the mind all this new research points to the heart being the big thing as to what you want to push out into the world the other thing is that each energy gives you a superpower something that makes you really really special now it is quite hard for us to recognize our superpowers and I go into that within a, a free program I've got called uh, The Superpowers Experience, where we look at why we struggle to recognize our superpowers and what they would be by looking at your vitality test profile and look at what would happen if you have one energy having one superpower and one energy having another super. How do those come together? So one of the things that is our role, our responsibility, the thing that we're to do at the moment, I think, is to really, like I said, the very first slide, uh, I think, is to understand what's going on. So we're less scared, we're less frightened, we can keep calm, and also to recognize who we are and what our contribution is. And I think the five energies are a great way to understand. And like I said, it could just be you loving yourself or forgiving yourself or whatever it might be. Um, so... It is for us to take those superpowers, those energies, that promise you made, and to go out into the world and to be brave. To recognize also there is a lot to do. There is a mountain to cover. However, we have the ability to be curious, to be questioning, to be able to start, look at something new and say, oh, I see some potential in that. We also have, as human beings, we have the ability to get on. We have the ability to support each other, to be there for each other. So... I think our role and our responsibility is to understand the bigger picture that's going on, recognize that it is a struggle, it is a muddle, and some of us are struggling more than others, and that's fine because we all have different personalities. And then to take those superpowers that we have and the promise we've made to be part of how we decide we want the world to be. And that could just be you in your meditation sending out love to not fall into the trap of arguing and fighting and and, and black and white thinking to evolve beyond it. And is that easy to evolve beyond it? Well, we have something on our side. We have our evolutionary shift in our spirituality, which allows us to see way beyond who we were before. So your role, I think, is to understand your superpowers, to, to understand what's going on and to step into that and to come together as a community to support each other, to cheer each other on. And I think there's one other thing. Many people have been broken by this situation. And I talked about in a video that Although it feels like we're being broken, we're actually being rearranged, but it does feel like being broken. So if you are someone that has had some experiences that have left you frightened or broken or lost or confused, or you once had certainty and now you don't because things seem to change, you're not alone with that. At the Five Institute, that's kind of what we're good at doing. We've got superpowers experience, depending on when you're listening to this, five-day mindset makeover, bigger program, energetic superpowers and heroic actions, which is about you taking the stuff that you do and being heroic in a way that never that never involves sacrifice so we've got those programs for you so that's what you can do and then there is one other thing to recognize that people are broken if that's you we're here for you the other thing i think is is really really important is that with this overwhelm and this struggle and this muddle and this brutality that we're seeing as change is happening as something is being taken from us and before something new arrives there can be a situation with this overwhelm that for some people it's just too much and people are deciding to leave the earth or, or they're deciding to opt out of life. And they might be opt-outing life by eating or drinking or binge-watching or on their phone or distracting. So there is an opting out. And I think that we just need to be mindful that there can be this brave face, but there can be a situation where people might be thinking about opting out and just being mindful of that, that within our exploration of how we want the world to be that some people can't engage with that because it's too much for them at this moment and to be able to just support and hold them and and be aware that it is a very very difficult phase for many people and sometimes we just need to be aware however there is a situation in every moment of every day we have choices and at the five institute we choose kindness and i think that makes the, the world a better place 
So thank you very much um, for that. If you're here with me live, we're going to take some questions now. If you're not and you're watching this recording, then put in the comments below what you're thinking. If you like this, if it's been helpful, whatever's going on for you, we're in this together. Thank you very much.